Hey guys, and welcome back to Watch Gauge. First of all, thank you guys so much for always tuning in, for sharing, for liking, uh, for purchasing watches. It's so much fun to be able to do this. I have a very, very exciting announcement to make, and I'm not going to be making this one alone. I am fortunate enough to be introducing and launching a brand new series of NTH subs, along with my good friend Chris Vale. For this video, I did a Skype interview with Chris. I just downloaded some new software to record it. I do want to apologize in advance because the video quality is not fantastic. I believe it has to do with my internet connection and things like that but I'm working on that so it will get better, I promise. However, the content, I do promise you, will be entertaining uh, as you can always imagine when you talk to Chris. He's a good friend, he's a big character, uh, fun to talk to, so I hope you guys enjoy. Without further ado, let's take a look at some new subs and talk with Chris about it. All right, so Chris, thanks for joining us. Um, we've got some big news to announce, I suppose. We're, we're doing a simultaneous launch and pre-order of the brand new subs collection or the brand new pieces in the subs collection, correct? Yeah, I mean, you tell me, are you going to be ready to go uh, tomorrow at noon? 100%. They're already up on the website. They are, the, everything's there. It's all set, locked and loaded, and I don't even have to press a button. I figured out how to, uh, how to automatically launch something for the first time. So go, John, and uh, Baby use steps. Shopify. <laughs> Baby steps. Baby steps. That's it. That's it. Yeah, so we're ready to roll. I, um, how many how many new models are coming out? How many new versions of the subs are coming out? So I actually I, I got to look to the side here. I got a multi-screening. Cool. So we've got um, we have five new versions of the subs for this pre-order, and we've already got a bunch more in the can for the next uh, round or two. But for now, you'll see five new ones, and then we've got three of the old favorites that are also available in this pre-order. All right. So the old favorites are what the the neck in modern blue. It's the neck in modern black the neck in modern blue, the uh, neck in vintage blue, uh, those are the three old ones, right. and the rest are all the five new ones. And the difference between the modern blue and the vintage blue is, uh, the things I notice is that texture on the dial of the vintage is like that sandpaper texture, right? It's really, it's, it's got that neat texture to it, right? Yeah, so the vintage has the sandpaper texture, and the uh, there's a few subtle differences. The uh, indices on the dial are, um, Sorry, they're printed, not applied. They're applied on the modern. They're printed on the vintage. Cool. And uh, the loom color on the modern is just that pure white uh, BGW9 that glows blue. On the vintage, it's actually a color called uh, natural. That's a Superluminova, or Tritec, the company that makes Superluminova. They call it natural. So it's kind of a sort of a pale yellow. It's not full-on faux vintage, but it's not pure white either. Uh, glows green. And... Um, it's the same color on the bezel. So, and the uh, the other big difference is the handset. On the modern, they're framed in white, kind of all whited out. Uh, okay. And on the vintage, they have the metal brushed metal frames. Okay, cool, cool. I, this is actually my first time being able to sell the uh, the vintage blue. Oh, uh, so I'm stoked about that. I I know I think I ordered five of them. I might I might only be selling four. We'll we'll see. Um, yeah. I might adorn my own wrist with it. You know. So yeah, it was one of the more popular versions in the first batch, and. Um, you know, we made it, and, you know, it's like we made a bunch of them, we sold out, and then I would get a couple guys here and there asking me, so we made a few more, made a few more. I'm not sure how many more we're going to make, so if you don't get one now, they may not be in, there may not be any more. Yeah. So what, do you, what do you, are you wearing a watch now? Uh, no, I don't, I don't wear a watch when I'm working, but I've got, I've got, like, watches all over my desk. Like, I just, they're literally all over the place. Yeah, you know, what's funny is I, I took... I took uh, my Nazario off so I can do a wrist shot of a Seiko to to put up there on social, and uh, and I didn't put my Nazario back on. So so there is no wrist check in this video, which is uh, strange for watch guys. So right. So, so here's my here's my typical desk. So I've got the watch I wore last and didn't feel like putting away when I took it off. That's over here. Right. And then I was working on <clears throat> I was working on trying to figure out. So we do a, we do illustrations, and I have to figure out for the for the colors, I gotta look at the loom and then like hold it up against my screen and go, okay, what color is that? So I got like a different, I got like different things. So like this is the vintage black, I'll hold this up. So this is the neck in vintage, neck in vintage black. Right. So I was looking at this loom color and then here's the Barracuda. So this is C3, this is natural. 
and I was trying to figure out, okay, what color is this loom? What color is that loom? So these are just kind of sitting up on my desk. And, and like, it just, this happens this way. I get like a dozen watches floating around, and then I get tired of looking at them. I go, all right, I'm going to put them all away. So the same thing happened to me the other day. As a matter of fact, I put something up on, uh, on the Instagram uh, page for a watch gauge. I think it was watch gauge. It might have been my personal one, but I, I must have had 11 watches on my desk. And legitimately, I didn't even move them. I just took a picture of my desk and put it up as a normal day at work, right? So yeah. whether it's watches we're selling, I'm photographing, uh, people are asking questions about things like that. Um, also, I, I had the other day, I have uh, Boulder made this medial gray, which is a meteorite dial. And I had a client ask, can I take a picture of every one I have in stock, the nine, eight or nine I had in stock, to send them pictures of each one so he could tell which dial he wanted. You know, so I had, I had at one point I had, I think, eight or so medial grays on my desk. So. Uh, it's part of the fun of being in the business we're in, right? Yeah, you're, you're way more patient than I am. If I got a request like that, I'd be just like, you know what, you're not getting any of them. No <laughs> soup for you. <laughs> call John at WatchGage, he might do it. Exactly, yeah, call John. <laughs> He's way more patient with this stuff than I am. Yeah, so, all right, so tell us about the, the new versions coming out. These things, uh, I know what they look like. They're awesome. Yeah, so a lot of what we do is uh, people think I don't listen, but the fact is I do. I, I, I get ideas and suggestions from people and I go okay I'm not going to do that right away but I'll think about it and if I hear a few more I'll, I'll consider it more so um, when we came out with the subs originally there were just eight and then there were five more and the longer we do this the more ideas that come up so uh, in no particular order we would gotten requests for something that was you know blue with a bit of gold you know not exactly two-toned but kind of sort of two-tone, sort of like a glycine uh, combat sub, what they call the golden eye. Right. So that's the Barracuda Blue. It's uh, basically the same as the regular or first Barracuda, which is brown. It's got the sunburst dial, but instead of being brown, it's blue. Yeah. Instead of the bezel being brown, it's blue. C3 loom. And uh, we kind of lightened up on some of the uh, the gold. On the original brown, the, uh, the dial text was gold, except for the word Barracuda in red. For the new, the blue version, the dial text is actually just white. We didn't think it looked right with the gold. It was too much. Um, and instead of going with red, we just we just printed Barracuda in white. So it's we pulled back a little bit on some of that gold color. Um, the Tiburon is uh, you know kind of our homage to the uh, what they call the Rolex Bart Simpson or the Maxi dial. You know that old vintage mill sub that came uh, sort of in that same time frame, but maybe a little bit after. The, uh, the real famous one uh, from Rolex that they issued to the MOD with the sword hands. So it's got Mercedes hands. Again, it's got the vintage. Uh, so it's got Mercedes paper texture. It's got uh, much larger printed uh, markers, markers on the dial. The dial. Uh, and it's, uh, again, again, it's got that, uh, that natural color loom, which is not exactly faux patina, but sort of, you know, going there. Uh, and instead of giving it, <clears throat> pardon me, instead of giving it a black bezel, we gave it the uh, blue bezel. So we had a couple guys asking to do, you know, black dial, blue bezel, or blue bezel, black dial, um, blue dial, black bezel, or black dial, blue bezel. So this is for those guys. Um, score pen blue. We had a lot of requests for the score pen. Uh, the original one was black. We, we, it was one of the more popular versions uh, before we actually started pre-orders. Everybody loved it. And then I think it ended up being a lot of people's second choice. Um, we made, I think, 50 of them. We sold out eventually. And uh, I got, like, you know, Ricardo from uh, the Urban Gentry. He's been asking me to make more. There's a few other guys been asking me to make more. Uh, but I've also had guys saying, you know, you ought to make a blue sunburst Flieger. So I kind of took those ideas and put them together. We made the score pen blue. Yeah, this yeah. is one of my favorite subs that you ever had. I love I just the, the dial and bezel combination on that on that is fantastic. You, the new one or the, the original? Both. And I love the uh, the blue on it. It's just spectacular. With the, and, and the way that the text plays, right? So it's a, it's a bit more busy than one of the other subs, but in a, in a good way. Yeah, I mean, it's it's one of those things where people look at the design and an illustration and they go, ah, it's too busy. But then you see it in real life. You know, you're not... When you look at an image online, you're seeing it probably... 10 or 20 times larger than it's actually going to look on your wrist. So you see pe people's wrist shots and it's like, oh my God, that's amazing. So, you know, and that's, I'm not talking about my watches. I mean, just watches in yeah, general. I agree. You know, that, that's what people's reactions tend to be. Like, oh, it looks so much better in real life. 
than it looked in your illustration. So it's one of those designs. And, um, you know, unfortunately, I was going to make more of it, but somebody with a retail store came and made and, and asked me to make a whole bunch of neck and modern blues for them. So I wasn't able to make enough. So um, what we're going to do with that one and the Renegade is I've already ordered more. So in this pre-order, uh, we're not going to have that many available. Between you and one of my other retailers, I just don't have any or, or, or many. But yeah. there are going to be more, and we'll have those ready for delivery in the fall. So for those guys that have been looking for a Sunburst Blue Flieger and those guys that have been looking for more of the Scorpion, the original one, here's something maybe to consider. Right. The uh, – this Vard piece, which is uh, not easy to say, it took me a little yeah. bit of practice. What, so tell me what the name came from. So all of the subs are named after different classes of submarines in use by different navies at various times. Some are still in use, some not. So um, at first it was just like, let's look at these names and try to pick ones we think sound good and assign them to different models. But very quickly I just thought, I, I figured out that certain names just kind of go with certain designs. So this Vardfees, because it's orange, orange is the color of the Dutch royal family. So I said, oh, oh natural. This Vardfees is actually, it's Dutch for swordfish. It's uh, the name of a Dutch submarine. And uh, again, it's orange. Yeah. And the inspiration there is a combination of, um, it's both Tudor, vintage snowflake sub or vintage submariner, as well as um, Oyer made uh, uh before the merger with tag oyer made a model that kind of looked like that uh the the dial on the oyer was more uh traditional rolex markings it had the circles and the rectangles whereas this one has the uh the vintage tudor look it's got the circles and the triangles and we gave it um the blacked out hands frames the uh vintage tudor handset um and the blacked out uh frames of the markers so again printed matte dial um and it's a combination of tudor and oyer with uh you know a funny name awesome. uh and then lastly is the uh my personal favorite the neck and renegade my favorite as well yeah and so everybody kind of understands the neck and as a family of of designs it's all inspired by those vintage tudor snowflake subs sometimes what we do with when we're looking at a new design and we're coming up with something you know, we'll do Google image searches for, you know, show me a vintage Rolex Submariner that's, you know, the Bart Simpson, or show me a vintage Tudor Snowflake Sub. And we end up with this archive of 20 or 30 or 40 different images of the same model at various stages of deterioration or being vintage and patinaed. So there was one in particular that just stuck with me. It was a Tudor Snowflake Sub with, um, you know, a very faded... Like it had a blue fade in the middle to black at the at the outside and uh, a black bezel on it, and I just was like, at some point we're going to make something that looks exactly like that. Yeah. So it's not so much an homage to a particular model as it is we're trying to replicate an exact image of somebody's vintage Tudor out there that posted it online. So so that's the Neck and Renegade, and again, you know, uh, we are only able to make like thirty pieces in this first production run. And uh, you've got some, my other retailer got some, and the rest are going to probably sell out pretty quickly here. Cool. Yeah, I mean, so so I know I committed to a small handful of watches. I think I have, for, for the new models, more or less I have about five of each, right? Um, mostly no dip. Yeah. And, uh, and then I have a handful of uh, neck and modern blues still available. Uh, not many, though. Uh, this run, I think I ordered 60 pieces, and I'm... I'm about ten or fifteen away from being sold out of those, so so it's well. It's worse than that. You're, you're these the pieces you ordered that we're doing pre-order for now. You've already sold all those. You, oh yeah, you're, yeah, yeah, yeah. You're talking about the next run. We're not even going to be able to deliver those until October. Right. Yeah. So so that brings us to uh, the obvious. Where the the watches we're launching now are going to be delivered when they're already. They're already in assembly. They're in assembly right now. We're going to be delivering those in six or eight weeks. So late July, early August, sometime in that time frame is when we're going to be delivering on these. Awesome. So, and we're right now we're sitting in mid-June. So we're a month and a half, six weeks, eight weeks away. Yeah, so, so for, in pre-order standards, this is a pretty short uh, wait window. Yeah, I mean, you know, you and I talked. I, my 
plan was not to do any pre-order at all, just to wait until they came in, yeah. put them up on the website, and let people order from stock. But I showed these designs a few months ago, and I've been kind of showing them again here and there. I mean, you know, I haven't really been hyping them very much, but yeah. there's not that many. And so yeah. people have been asking, like, when are you going to make more of – the neck in modern black, the neck in modern blue, the vintage blue. When are these score pen blue going to be available? When is this neck in renegade going to be available? And I got work to do. So if people email me enough, I'll go, you know what? There's people out there that are ready to, you know, they want me to shut up and take their money. Fine. I'll shut up and take your money. We wouldn't, we weren't planning on doing a pre-order at all. Here we are. Yeah. Fantastic. So things are rocking and rolling, motoring with Janice Trading. And very cool. Well, I'm super stoked for our pre-order tomorrow. And, uh, and then all the other things we have going on, as you mentioned, the Catalina, the Urban Gentry uh, watch, the first ever watch with the Urban Gentry uh, branding on it is, you know, almost sold out. So, again, super stoked about that. I think we made 100 of those pieces in this run. So, uh, exciting stuff. And, and as always, I appreciate your partnership and, and obviously your friendship. And uh, looking forward to, to bigger and better things also down the road. Likewise. Feel the all same right. way. Thanks, John. Thanks, thanks for taking time with me, Chris. You too. All right, bye. Thanks for having me. You got it. So I hope you're all as excited as I am about the brand new NTH subs. We will be launching them on Wednesday, June 12th at noon at 12 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So 12 noon New York time. They will go live on my site. They will go live on his site. We don't have many at all. I believe I have somewhere in the ballpark of five pieces total. So jump on, check them out, hit that buy button. We will be delivering them sometime, I'd say at the latest, the first, second week in August, hopefully, assuming everything goes correctly. So it's a pretty short window. In other news, I've got a few of the NTH Modern Blue. I'm calling it V3, so Modern Blue pre-order version 3. Those will be deliverable in, looks like, November. So I have a handful of those left, not many. I think somewhere around 10. So jump on and get those, as well as the NTH Catalina, which is the Urban Gentry watch. That watch is the very first watch ever to have any sort of Urban Gentry uh, brand on it. Again, I look at the Urban Gentry not as a YouTube channel, not as a guy in TGV, but as a community. And if you're part of that community, you happen to love watches and the conversations and discussions within the Facebook group and everything else, that will be a watch for you. Finally, we just launched the brand new Hemel HD collection. I have a video on that. I'll put a link to the video in the description below if you're on YouTube. The watch is fantastic. 300 meter water resistance, great size, very unique look. Doesn't look like anything else out there on the market and some pretty insane colors as well as a watch gauge special edition. So thank you guys all so much again. Like, share, contribute, anything you'd like. Reach out to me if you have any questions I can answer. Instagram, give us a follow. Facebook, follow our Facebook page. And as always, subscribe here on YouTube. Thank you guys so much for everything. Check out the NTHs, check out the Hemmels. Got some great boulders up there. Visit WatchGage.com, and thanks for everything. We'll get back at you guys very soon.